We want to get back out to the scene up in Pompano Beach where there has been a helicopter crash. Broward Sheriff's Office has confirmed to us that the helicopter was indeed a fire rescue helicopter that went down in Pompano Beach. It's right near North Dixie Highway and Atlantic Boulevard. Just to give you a better idea, it's relatively close to the airport there in Pompano Beach, just uh, uh, east of I-95, close to Pompano Beach Ely High School. And you're looking at these live images. This is from Chopper 6, and you can see just so many emergency vehicles there on the scene. Uh, if you're driving in this area or if you need to drive in this area, just a traffic alert to be aware of. Uh, the section of East of Dixie Highway there, just uh, east of I-95 near Northeast 5th Street between Northeast 5th and Northeast 10th Street, shut down right now as police continue to investigate and emergency responders are there on the scene. What BSO is telling us right now is about 845 this morning, they received reports of an aircraft alert located southwest of the Pompano Beach Air Park there. The helicopter involved again is a BSO fire rescue helicopter that went down. Pompano Beach Fire Rescue did transport two people to area hospitals to be treated. We don't have any word on their condition right now. Obviously, we have our crews working to try and gather that information. But as you can see here, it is still a very active scene in Pompano Beach after the helicopter crashed uh, probably about an hour ago, a little more than an hour ago. This is Chopper 6 providing us with a live look from up above where you can see the, the large uh, response here from fire uh, officials, police vehicles, um, emergency responders in general, closing off that area so they can move in and tend to those people affected by uh, this helicopter crash. No word on if the people transported were on board the helicopter or if they were people on the ground at the time. That's uh, information we will continue to try to confirm and get for you here this morning. But if you're just joining us, again, about uh, an hour and 15 minutes ago, a helicopter, a Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter crashed in Pompano Beach, not far from the Pompano Beach Air Park. It went down right in the area of North Dixie Highway and uh, Atlantic Boulevard in Pompano Beach. Right now, a traffic advisory is in effect because stretches of Northeast 5th Street all the way up to Northeast 10th Street are closed as the police and the fire rescue officials continue to investigate to uh, tend to those who are affected by this helicopter crash. Uh, just to uh, give you an idea of where we're talking about. If you're on I-95, you go north of Atlantic Boulevard. That's where uh, Pompano Beach Ely High School is, just east of I-95. That's where the Pompano Beach Air Park is as well. And it appears that this helicopter crashed right in that section, somewhere between 5th and 10th Street there off of Dixie Highway. So this is a, a Okay, uh, talking with our producers right now, we have some cell phone video that was just sent in to NBC6 that we want to share with you now. So I'm going to be taking a look at this for the first time, just as you are. And what you can see here is that helicopter in the sky. And wow, look at that. You see the smoke. You see the tailspin as it heads toward the ground and, and the impact that it made right there. And here's another look at it again. Again, we're just looking at this for the first time along with you. And you can see something is going wrong. That helicopter in distress as it heads toward the ground, spinning out of control, smoke pouring out of that helicopter. Uh, obviously, the investigation, the NTSB is going to have to look into this, figure out what caused this crash, what caused that helicopter to lose control the way it did. But uh, this is some new video we have just coming in, some cell phone video sent to NBC6 by one of our viewers showing exactly Exactly the moments where that helicopter crashed and what you're looking at now live images from chopper six above the aftermath of that accident and you could just see how many police fire ambulances are there on the scene again just to give you an idea this is Dixie Highway which is shut down right between Northeast 5th and Northeast 10th streets so if you're traveling in the Pompano Beach area if you're east of I-95 just keep that in mind if you have friends or family in the area just keep that get, let them know give them a heads up that that big stretch is closed right now so investigate can look into what happened here and try to figure out uh, who is in need of help, get those who were injured tended to, and obviously uh, clean up that area before they can reopen it and make sure that the streets are safe before they can uh, allow traffic to move through there once again. We're not sure exactly where this helicopter crashed, the specific location. Uh, we're giving you just the general idea. We don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get a better look to see if it looks to be a residential area. 
Uh, we see a lot of trees, so a lot of it is uh, limited visibility because of the trees. I think that's some smoke it looks like uh, from the ground right there as our helicopter zooms in to try to give us a better idea uh, of this crash site. Uh, we saw that amateur video, that uh, cell phone video that was sent in just a moment ago, and you saw the helicopter. There was smoke coming from that helicopter as it was twisting out of control into the ground here. And this is a live look now at the aftermath. Now I can see some what appears to be some water from fire hoses being sprayed there in the center of your screen. If you look where that white car is right next to the building, uh, which may have been impacted by this helicopter. Again, we're seeing this for the first time. And yeah, as I get a better look at this, it looks like that is some sort of structure, a home, an office building, something where that helicopter appears to have gone right through the roof of whatever structure or building that is, whether it's a home or a town home or apartment building, it's something. But you can see the firefighters there right by the white pickup truck uh, and that white vehicle there on the ground. And some of them are inside of that home. You can see them working to try and, and extinguish the flames. They're spraying off the side walls of that building, trying Trying to make sure no hot spots flare fire back up. Uh, if you're just joining us now, as we're just a little past uh, 10 o'clock this morning, at about 8:45 this morning, the Broward Sheriff's Office had reports of a helicopter in distress, uh, trouble with a with a helicopter, and that helicopter crashed right in the area of Dixie Highway, uh, somewhere in between Northeast Fifth Street and Northeast 10th Street, and you can see right there where that helicopter made impact, crashing right into this building. As we take another look, it looks like it may be an apartment building. You can see some of the satellite dishes uh, on the roof and on the side of the building, which indicates people probably live there. So I'm, 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 I'm going to venture to guess this is a local apartment building is what it looks like, at least from the outside. And you can see just all of those firefighters continuing to spray water and flame retardant, that foam on to try to make sure that this fire does not flare back up. But very serious situation. Uh, we have reports again from the Broward Sheriff's Office that two people were transported to local hospitals. We don't know if those two people were the people on board the helicopter, if they were people injured on the ground. Obviously, that was preliminary information. And as the Broward Sheriff's Office continues to investigate, as the firefighters continue to move in and assess that situation, we can get some updated numbers and information as well. But just to recap for you about 845 this morning, that uh, Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter went down, crashing into this building. And I think we can queue up the video that we have sent in from an NBC6 viewer showing the moments where that helicopter was out of control and it, uh, not whether sure it was on fire or not, but you can see the smoke pouring out of that helicopter. We're going to try to bring that up to you in just a moment so you could take a look at that video that we had sent in, which led to what you're looking at right now. And you see the firefighters continuing to spray water and spray foam onto that building. Here's that video we were just telling you about sent in by one of our NBC6 viewers. And you can see there is some big trouble there on board that helicopter spinning out of control and then slamming into the ground. And what we're looking at now is the building on uh, where it slammed into. This residential building looks like an, an apartment building here in Pompano Beach, right off of Dixie Highway, somewhere between Northeast 5th Street and Northeast 10th Street, which by the way, if you're in that area, that section is closed down right now. So if you're in the Pompano Beach area, uh, you can see why it's closed down, but investigators have closed off that entire area so that their uh, crews can work safely. And uh, whew, this is tough to look at here because you can see the extent of the damage after that helicopter slammed right into that building. And these firefighters working hard to make sure that that fire doesn't flare back up. Uh, I'm just joining Chris here this morning as we're continuing to watch this uh, chopper crash that began around 845 when this aircraft went down. Uh, if you're familiar with this area, this is North Dixie Highway and around the Atlantic Boulevard uh, area. This is a highly residential area, so that's why you're seeing this building, this apartment building. There's a school nearby, so if you think 845, uh, you wonder if anybody did see this during drop off or just after uh, school began to, to start because this is so close to a such, uh, so many neighborhoods and this school that is presumably pretty close to the air park there in Pompano. Uh, you can see just above, this is about as close as we can get uh, because this is an air park. So there's also a clearance that our chopper, NBC6 chopper, has to get as well to get near this area as they're investigating. But that is the gauged, uh, the, the gouged uh, apartment building there. As you saw that chopper going down, it was spinning out of control, that tail spinning out of control 
control and that smoke just trailing off of that chopper. It hit this apartment building, this residential building here, and uh, we're working to find out if there were any injuries inside of that building on the ground. We know there were at least perhaps uh, two to three people on board. We don't know if there are patients. Again, this is a fire rescue chopper. Uh, we don't know if they were going on a run for maintenance this morning or if they were transporting someone or if they were heading over to a call because that's what they do is they respond to fire rescue calls. So we don't know uh, what their path was this morning uh, when their plane had some technical issues. As you can see, that tail was going out of control. It has to speak to some technical issues this morning that this chopper had and uh, then ending right here. Uh, crashing into a, this apartment building and you can see that foam because there's jet fuel there on the ground so they're trying to put out some of that uh, right there and you can see the the spraying and the, and the water and, and the amount of uh, investigators who were who were on the scene not only just fire rescue but police as well uh, directing traffic in that area because you have several blocks on North Dixie Highway just uh, by the train tracks there on the right line uh, from Northeast 5th and Northeast 10th Street that are shut down as they continue this investigation. We can expect this to go on for quite some time this morning. So keep that in mind as you're traveling around the Pompano Beach area. We know that Marissa Bag is heading to the scene if she's not already there, talking to investigators, getting information from the ground. And we're also uh, having Amanda Placencia, who is at the hospital, North Broward General, uh, to find out the conditions of uh, several people who were on board. Uh, again, we don't know if these are law enforcement or if they were patients or who may have been uh, on board there, and that is all information that we're working to get at this hour. All right, uh, just to give a, a better idea of where we're talking about here, Dixie Highway, uh, just uh, north of Atlantic Boulevard. This is really close to the Pompano Beach Air Park, just east of the airport, air park, just west of the air park, and just east of Pompano Beach Ely High School. Uh, Blanche Ely High School is right there. So again, as Shelly mentioned, uh, a lot of people probably were working their way to school or, or had arrived to school, and maybe parents were leaving uh, school buses out and about uh, as this helicopter went down at about 845 this morning and at least one person obviously capturing the vantage point because they sent in that video of the helicopter spinning out of control before slamming into this building here. Uh, and I'm, I've been looking while you were talking, Shelly, trying to get a closer look inside of the building to, to see maybe any of the remnants or, or the structure of that helicopter. And I can't see it. Yeah. Uh, which, which leads you to show the power of that impact here. And, and again, once we get some more details, we can confirm the specifics as to where this helicopter went down and, and a better address and a better locator. For right now, we're just going with Dixie Highway between uh, 5th Street, Northeast 5th Street and Northeast 10th Street, which is uh, the section of roadway that is closed down right now by uh, investigators. They have that area closed off so these firefighters can continue to do their job working safely. And you see the water just pouring out of the top of the building. They're continuing to spray this down uh, to, to make sure the fire is extinguished it's out and make sure that those hot spots don't flare back up. Uh, as far as injuries are concerned, the only report we have at this point. And again, this can obviously change. This was a preliminary report by the Broward Sheriff's Office that two people were transported to local hospitals. Uh, no word on if those two people were on board the helicopter, if they were people who were injured while on the ground. Uh, we'll get that confirmed with our reporter team. Again, Amanda Placencia is, is working this case. She is at North Broward Medical Center. Uh, Marissa Bag is there on the scene in Pompano Beach at the scene of this crash, trying to gather some information from investigators there on the ground. But right now, the sense of urgency is obviously to uh, tend to those people who are on the ground, make sure that everybody in that surrounding area is okay and accounted for, and also make sure that that fire does not flare back up uh, and that they can keep those fires uh, extinguished right now. And that seems to be what the firefighters are focused on as the rest of the streets there surrounding this apartment complex are blocked off right now. All started just a little over uh, an hour and almost an hour and 30 minutes ago when the initial reports came into the Broward Sheriff's Office about this helicopter in distress. And I think we have that video that we're going to pull back up for you in just a moment uh, to show you the moments that this helicopter, it was apparently in some obvious serious trouble where you can see the smoke pouring out of the helicopter as it spins out of control, heading toward the ground before crashing into this apartment building. And once we get that video queued up for you, we'll show it to you once again. Uh, it'll give you a better idea of just uh, the, the, the dangerous situation that they were in. And you can see the, the, the pilot, you presume, trying to gain control of the air 
aircraft, but when it's spinning like that out of control and the smoke is pouring out, obviously there's something seriously wrong there. Uh, and they were unable to get control back of that helicopter and it slammed there into the ground. This video sent in cell phone video from an NBC6 viewer sharing that with us here this morning. And what you're looking at now live on your screen is the result of that helicopter crash. Uh, and you can see just how many firefighters and, and how many uh, emergency responders, police officers are there on the scene to, to tend to, wow, you can just see yeah. the, just how big of a scene this is. Such a big scene. In fact, a lot of, uh, you know, not only law enforcement being on the ground, but just neighbors in general. Again, this being such a highly popular uh, residential area, we got so many pictures as you're seeing right here. And uh, this is the fire. This is from wow. Kara Burgess, one of our viewers. And this is from the ground, the video that this person got after that plane or rather that, that chopper came crashing down onto that residential building there. Just the powerful smoke, the black smoke and the firefighters already on there trying to uh, take control of, of that fire. And we have been showing you the aftermath from our chopper. But, you know, Palm View Elementary is just across from North Dixie Highway and you could see the smoke from that area. So again, so many images that we're getting from viewers because people were perhaps heading to work and people were perhaps dropping off their kids this morning. I mean, it's a Monday morning. You're just starting your work week, your school week, and you don't expect to see something like this. And just uh, unfortunate this morning that we have to report um, this chopper crash. BSO, Broward Sheriff's Fire Rescue. These are This is a chopper that is used to going to scenes, responding to scenes. And in this case this morning, we don't know if they were heading to an incident or if they were just, you know, filling up fuel, heading to a maintenance run. And this is the unfortunate fate there of that chopper uh, that happened soon after 845 this morning. And you're looking at the area being taped off. We're working to find out who is in that building, uh, who was in this building at this time. Do we have any injuries on the ground? Because you're looking at possibly two or three units that yeah. were just caved in, directly impacted. Uh, if you're in there, I mean, imagine that force and the sounds and what you're feeling when you, you see, and this is the last thing that you expect, a chopper to go down into your own unit. Um, this is just so rare and so unfortunate. And what you're looking at here, it doesn't look like they're, you know, uh, rushing to get anybody out. Yeah. So you wonder, was there anybody in there or did they already, you know, it, it's just too soon to tell. Uh, I tell you what, the, looking at the video that we just saw of that fire, the fact that this building is still standing, hats off to those firefighters for their quick response, getting that fire put out before the fire could spread to the remaining units in that entire yeah. building. Uh, the fact that that building is still standing after the intensity that we saw in that fire just a few moments ago, sent in by another NBC6 viewer. Uh, and again, if you have some more videos uh, of this incident, because this was a busy time in the morning, make sure you send them us to us over here at NBC6 uh, because we want to take a look at the, the, the different angles and the different vantage points of this helicopter going down. But the fact that this building is still standing shows you uh, how quickly these firefighters were able to respond, get there to the scene and put that fire out. Uh, because when you're dealing with a crash of an aircraft, and Shelly, you touched on this a little bit earlier, uh, the fuel that that aircraft is carrying is is what ignites as well and that's burning at a, at a very hot temperature and you can see just how intense those flames were and just sparked up by not only the impact of that crash but ever fuel was on board that helicopter is is then igniting and it makes it a very very tough situation for those firefighters to go in and try to fight that fire from the inside and from the outside first from the outside to get it under control and now where you see them on the inside to make sure that the fire is indeed out and we don't see another flare up as you do a lot of times with with house fires or, or building fires and other structure fires you'll see that they get the fire out uh, and then they continue to watch it because some of those embers deep down below could spark back up and then all of a sudden you're dealing with another fire and there are some these are apartments that are all connected so they don't want that fire to fire back up because it can spread to some of those other units. But again, quick actions there by the fire department in Pompano Beach and the surrounding fire departments. I'm sure this was a multi-alarm fire that had everybody uh, on standby rushing over to that scene to put that fire out and, and prevent it from spreading through the rest of that building. So hats off to them because that building is still standing thanks to their quick actions. No kidding. Uh, our aviation expert, Willard Shepard, if you could hear us, we, we would love to get your intake on this. Uh, it, it, well, can you hear us okay? 
No, I hear you just fine. Oh, wonderful. Great to, to talk to you. Uh, unfortunate that is under these circumstances. But Willard, when you're seeing the video uh, of this plane going down, the tail spinning out of control, the smoke is trailing out of it. What does that speak to as much as, you know, from your experience, what do you think, you know, could have happened here? Well, first of all, you know, our thoughts and prayers to uh, all of the people in the building and our BSO deputies who were on that helicopter this morning. I walked out of the Broward County Courthouse and immediately heard about this and have seen this video. Uh, what it tells me is from that black smoke uh, that there was some type of uh, engine trouble that the uh, helicopter experienced this morning. Um, BSO had moved this helicopter after many years being over at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport to uh, Pompano Beach. And uh, that smoke indicates some type of uh, engine trouble. There's something that uh, helicopters, uh, and they train for this all the time, helicopter pilots, what's called an auto rotation. And that basically means uh, you shut the engine off, there's an engine problem, and therefore when there's an engine problem, you go ahead and you can still uh, make an emergency landing. Uh, you learn how to use the lift that is being used from the blades of the helicopter rotating to get you safely on the ground. That's something the FAA training requires, and that's something that uh, these pilots certainly had been through and practiced frequently. However, the number one thing you want to do as a pilot of any type of aircraft, whether it's a helicopter like this, whether it's a fixed-wing aircraft, is to place other people on the ground in danger. And clearly here, because of these terrible pictures that we're seeing from the helicopter um, that is showing this apartment building, and what we saw in that cell phone video that uh, a viewer had provided to you, that the helicopter was basically out of control. Certainly these deputies would have done everything to try to get back to the Pompano uh, Air Park to uh, put the airplane or put the aircraft down there and certainly not go in to a civilian building like this. And therefore, uh, they will be looking at when the NTSB examines this, all types of uh, structural failure, what could have caused this type of thing in addition to what initially took place uh, with that black smoke coming out of the helicopter. Uh, Willard, in a case like this where there appears to be engine failure of some sort, the helicopter then, and, and, and we saw it in the video, lost control, and it was spinning out of control, and you talked a bit about how a pilot's first job at that point is to, to move out of a residential area, try to minimize the impact there on the ground, which, you know, looking at the, the scene here, it, it seems like it's a heavy residential area, so it was a very tough task to begin with. But when you're spinning out of control like that, is there really anything the pilot can do at that point? Well, obviously here, these uh, aviators, and there are highly experienced aviators that uh, serve our community very well. Uh, these helicopters are used in so many police uh, operations now. Uh, we have these, uh, you know, you see them on the air at times when they are following people to make sure that deputies on the ground don't have to do that type of work. They have all different types of uh, surveillance equipment, many of uh, the types of things that uh, we have in the military to be able to see at night all types of police operations that are used with this. And so forth. therefore, they are very, very highly trained. And that would have been the very first option to get back to the Pompano Air Park, put the aircraft down there safely. And clearly, that was not an option here whatsoever at all because they would have gone through everything possible to get back there. And then the last thing uh, that they would have done uh, if they couldn't get back to the air park having any control over the helicopter was to put it in a location uh, away from this residential building, uh, even if it uh, be in a parking lot, if it was uh, a park that was nearby. I can't tell from the uh, pictures uh, from the NBC6 helicopter exactly where this is located in terms of the proximity to the air park, but those would have been the things that they would have been doing, and this is a complete... Uh, worst type scenario in a uh, situation uh, with this because that that smoke coming out of the helicopter uh, indicates you know that there was something uh, transpiring uh, coming from an area that had oil which means uh, an engine and then the lack of any control of the helicopter indicates some type of uh, structural damage and again i've been hearing you saying the incredible job that the uh, fire department did there on the ground 
to be able to uh, extinguish this in such a rapid fashion uh, because that other cell phone video, you saw the, the flames that uh, this apartment building was enduring after the helicopter first went into it. We've been speaking to Willard Shepard, our aviation expert. Uh, Willard, <clears throat> what happens next in this investigation when you're looking at this damage and you hear that two people at least are in the hospital? I mean, it's uh, thankful that anybody survived when you look at the extent of the damage. What happens now? Because they do have a record of this flight plan, who was perhaps on board. Take us down the next steps. Okay, well, first of all, we're all uh, hoping for the best for those people that were on the helicopter and in this apartment building, number one. Number two, uh, the Broward Sheriff's Office is securing this scene, and they will have a perimeter set up there, as we see uh, there now, and they will secure all of the information from the helicopter there that uh, went down in terms of uh, the structural aspects, it looked like to me that there were still some uh, helicopter parts and things that were in the parking lot there at the building. They will examine that. They will examine all of the maintenance records, all of the training records. Uh, they will take a look at uh, what appears to be weather would not be a factor in this. Uh, they will take a look at all of those types of things to see and gather all of the data and then interview people that were uh, on the helicopter and hopefully that will happen and also anyone on the ground that uh, saw the helicopter these people that took these uh, videos they would certainly want to talk to them and uh, what we have uh, is called a uh, national transportation safety board a go team a team that will be here probably already on the way to south florida and the people stationed here already headed to this location to secure all of the structural portions of the helicopter, and then they will start this process. Uh, we'll get a preliminary type, very basic information uh, in several days. But then again, uh, as we hear consistently, it will be weeks and or months before we know exactly what transpired here. And we never want to get out in front of that, yeah. even though we can glean some very basic things about this meaning that certainly if they were able to control this aircraft and helicopter today, it would not have ended up in that apartment building. Yeah, good point there, Willard. And um, while you were talking, actually, Chopper 6 uh, widened the frame a bit to give us a, a better vantage point of exactly where this is located. And this apartment building is only three, maybe four blocks away from the air park right there in Pompano Beach. And, and we're uh, getting that wider perspective now just to give you an idea of just how close this apartment building is to the air park, which you know, leads us to deduce that, that maybe the helicopter either had taken off shortly before this crash or was attempting to make it back to the air park to land when all of a sudden it went down. Uh, with it being so close to the air park, does that Give you any more insight as to what may have happened? Uh, would, would, would an engine type failure like this tend to happen earlier in the flight, or can it? Is it something that can just pop up at any time? Uh, well, excellent ob observation on your point uh, right there. With that, uh, clearly uh, taking off and landing in any type of aircraft, whether it's a helicopter or a aircraft, a commercial aircraft, military aircraft, fixed wing aircraft, those are the most dangerous times of flight. Uh, we don't know yet if the helicopter was taking off or returning. And uh, I fly out of this airport with our Air Force Civil Air Patrol Program. Very, very uh, busy airport with a lot of training and those types of things. And as you mentioned, that is very, very close to uh, the airport. I think we'll find out, you know, in a very quick time period about whether or not they were departing to go out on a mission or whether they were returning, coming back to the airport. One thing that you have mentioned about the fire department there and their rapid response and the great job that uh, the firefighters have done there, there is a fire station just east of Federal Highway on the eastern border of the airport. So they were a very short distance away and we're able to get there quickly to handle this on the ground. And fortunately, that uh, fire station is located where it was, and it appears to have made a big difference in what ultimately happened this morning. 
For someone who doesn't know, <clears throat> tell folks what uh, a fire rescue chopper does, because I mean, it, are, how often are they going to scenes? What kind of scenes are they going to? Uh, the pilot on board, the, the law enforcement who are on board, the firefighters who are on board, what do they do on a normal fire call where a chopper is needed for a, a type of call? Well, there's a variety with uh, helicopters uh, and the different missions. Uh, some of them are police missions with the uh, uh, sheriff's uh, department uh, helicopters that do things uh, like making sure that the deputies on the ground don't have to chase someone. Uh, if someone does escape on a scene, many times you will see on NBC6 that a perimeter has been set up, a helicopter is in the area. That is one of the uh, law enforcement missions. Uh, on the fire rescue side, they're evacuating people, people that have been involved in terrible uh, car accidents, or uh, if they've been shot, they need to be evacuated and get and transported to uh, Broward General or other hospitals in a rapid fashion, especially with the traffic that we have here in South Florida now. You can only imagine if a person needs uh, emergency assistance during the rush hours, how difficult it would even be for uh, uh, firefighters and other uh, law enforcement officers to be able to transport someone on the ground. So it's a really valuable tool to be able to have people move quickly in the air when they need emergency medical assistance. Those are the, the primary type missions that they would do, and they provide a valuable, valuable service and vital service to the community each and every day. And, and it's fantastic that these assets are available, especially as the traffic continues to grow here in South Florida. All right. Uh, Willard, we want to keep you here on uh, standby for just a moment, but we want to recap real quickly. If you're just joining us right now, it's uh, almost 1030 here on your Monday morning. At about 845, a Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter crashed in Pompano Beach, not far from the Pompano Beach Air Park, in fact, just a couple of blocks away, and it slammed right into this apartment building, and you can just see the extent of the damage right now. The only report we have at this point from Broward Sheriff's officials is that two people were taken to local hospitals, we don't know if they were on board the helicopter. We don't know if they were on the ground. Uh, what we did see is some cell phone video, two different videos. One of that helicopter in distress, as Willard touched on, it looks to be some sort of engine trouble as it was spinning out of control and eventually slamming into the ground. The next cell phone video that we had, and we're going to try to mix in those videos to show you in just a moment, is the intense fire that was burning. And Willard, uh, when we're talking about aircraft, the, the helicopter, I, I'm assuming, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that it uses some sort of at least aviation fuel uh, in a helicopter just as it would for an aircraft, uh, an airplane. When you're dealing with that type of fire, how is it different? You have a normal house fire that's going to burn and it's going to spread quickly, but it looked like the, the aviation fuel that was on board that helicopter really intensified those flames and they were shooting 20, 30, 40 feet up into the sky with some of the video. And, and we're looking at that video right now and you can just see the intensity of the fire burning. Well, when it comes to the aviation fuel that's on, whether it's a helicopter or a fixed-wing aircraft, in this kind of situation, you think about the how it was ignited. Uh, this is not something that, you know, normally in a house fire that grows gradually until some other type of flammable in a home or building ignites. In this, it all happened at once, and that is why you see that tremendous explosion and then fire that comes from it because this is all happening at one time it's not a gradual process it's something that happens all at once and that goes back to your point about the great job that the firefighters did there concerning this but that's what has transpired in terms of when the helicopter went in the building whatever fuel was left on the airplane ignited and ignited very 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 rapidly and that's different than a regular house fire where it grows through a certain area and may come from a kitchen fire and then goes into a living room or bedroom and then expands. This happened really instantaneously. And that's why we're seeing in this cell phone video, it looked like two or three units all on fire at the same time in a massive blaze. Willard Shepard, stand by for us. Uh, we do uh, have Marissa Bagg who just got there to the scene.
Uh, providing us some insight. <clears throat> Want to bring you up to speed, by the way, the area of North Dixie Highway, Atlantic Boulevard to Pompano Beach. Officers have shut down the area between Northeast 5th Street and Northeast 10th Street, again, in Dixie Highway. Uh, so if you're in that area, please don't wait. Uh, Marissa Bag joining us. Where, give us a, an insight of where you are, uh, comparably to, to uh, where the chopper went down. Sure. We're only about a block or two away. We're just on the west side of Dixie Highway and 10th Street. So really the epicenter of where this investigation is happening. In fact, I'll step out of the way. There's some yellow tape up in a parking lot just across the way. Um, and just on the other side of that police cruiser, there's a green tent, uh, the command center here for BSO. Um, so really this seems to be where all of that communication and investigation is happening for BSO at this hour. Uh, they have been able to confirm that two people who were on board that helicopter were rushed to the hospital. Uh, other law enforcement officials tell us that a third person who was on that helicopter initially was missing and then was found, but we do not know their condition at this hour. And all of this, of course, happening just about a half mile away from the corner of Pompano Beach Air Park. We have talked to a lot of people who actually saw the helicopter go down, and as you have seen in the video. Uh, they described how there was smoke coming out of it, how it was spinning in the air, and then it appeared the tail of the helicopter came off before it crashed. Uh, one man told me he heard two different explosions. One, when it first hit the roof of that one-story multi-unit building, and then a second uh, explosion um, a short time later. Uh, he said that second explosion forced some firefighters who were here on the scene to really back up, realize that they're, you know, they were obviously dealing with a very dangerous situation at this point. Now, as you mentioned, Shelley, everybody in this area who's driving really expected to go elsewhere or if you have to come through Dixie Highway, obviously you're going to be stopped and have to be pushed around um, to other streets because this investigation is quite large. Uh, they want to make sure in case any evidence or parts of the helicopter itself came off, uh, they're you know looking for any pieces that may have come off of the aircraft. I haven't been able to confirm whether the railroad um, tracks are closed, but we certainly haven't seen any trains come through. Uh, that's right next to the main part of this scene, so we can only imagine uh, that the train tracks are likely closed as well. We haven't seen anything uh, coming and going. Now, we have heard from a law enforcement source of mine that there is at least one fatality, but again, we're waiting to get that confirmation from the Broward Sheriff's Office. Uh, we can tell this is an incredibly sensitive sensitive situation for them. I was out here speaking with a couple of the, the public information officers who are obviously affected by this, knowing that this is their BSO fire rescue helicopter that's affected here. So that just makes this that much more of a sensitive situation that they're investigating uh, a, a helicopter crash that involves some of their own within the Broward Sheriff's Office. Now, as we're speaking right now, the uh, train... Uh, the train arms are going down. We're hearing, you know, dinging and the lights. So it sounds like there may be a train coming. So that would be confirmation that the train tracks in particular are open. But at, at this moment, I haven't quite seen the train yet. We should be able to confirm that for you. Yes, there's actually a bright line. I don't know if you want to come this way, Shane, to show them. There's a bright line train headed southbound on the tracks right now. Uh, you may be able to hear the horn there. It is going incredibly slow. You should probably be able to see it through our camera shot right now. Um, you know, moving incredibly slow going through this intersection. So there's a confirmation. The railroad tracks are open at this moment. Uh, trains moving through here, but of course very slowly for obvious reasons uh, because of the investigation that is ongoing here. Um, I did also want to mention a few of the people that I spoke with that live in this area, they say the building itself that the helicopter crashed into is a one-story multi-unit apartment uh, building, but again, all one floor, um, and that there were people inside.
of the unit that the helicopter hit. Um, they say when there was that first explosion, it created some hysteria out here. People who were just, you know, getting their day started. It was 8:45 in the morning. Uh, people were frightened, of course, to hear that, and then to hear what this witness tells me was a second explosion after it hit that building. Um, and as you can imagine, just a lot of the neighborhood coming out trying to figure out what happened. Some of them tell me, you know, they heard what sounded like a motorcycle crash initially. That got them out of their houses. And then they came to see what exactly uh, was happening here at this corner. So again, uh, the Bright Line train obviously moving through here. So we know the train tracks are open. Uh, we can see the BSO forensic response unit um, arriving here to the scene and just waiting for the train tracks to reopen up so that they can get onto the side of Dixie Highway where this investigation is going on. Um, but again, we're waiting to hear the latest um, official information from the Broward Sheriff's Office uh, spokespeople. So we will certainly bring you any new information we're able to get from them. At this point, they are telling us two people who were on board that helicopter were transported to the hospital, we believe by ambulance. Um, but again, some other law enforcement sources that we have telling us that there is at least one fatality from inside of the structure that was hit by this helicopter and possibly a second fatality, the third person that was on board this helicopter. But again, we're waiting to get all of those details confirmed. Uh, we will certainly bring that to you as soon as we have it. But that's the latest live out here in Pompano Beach. Marissa Bag, NBC6 News. Marissa, uh, you know, you talked a little bit about the reaction for the people who were on the ground there. Obviously, you never expect to see something like this. Um, obviously, it's shock, fear. Uh, when you're talking to them, what was their initial reaction? Did any of them you know, race toward the scene to see if there was anything they could do to help, or was it just a matter of standing there in shock trying to figure out what was going on? You know, initially, I think it was more shock, which is not a surprise, but I think they didn't know what happened. They heard an explosion. They heard a crash, um, but they didn't know where exactly it had taken place because, as you can see from the video from our chopper, that hole in the building, you can see it from atop the building, but it's harder to see from the ground. So I think that they weren't sure exactly what was happening. The building itself, you know, they may have seen some fire, but they weren't sure what was going on until that second explosion. Obviously, they knew it was something serious. And they said that, you know, firefighters were trying to respond, but they even saw some of them backing up because, you know, it was clear that this wasn't necessarily a, a safe situation for them to go in at that moment. Obviously, all of that has changed at this point. We know if firefighters got in there, put the fire out, you know, turned into search and rescue and even recovery mode. Um, but yes, certainly shock, concern, disbelief um, from people thinking that this could happen. But again, we are just a half mile from the Pompano Beach Air Park, so clearly not far away. According to some of the video that I saw, it, it appeared that that BSO fire rescue helicopter may have been trying to take off at the time. Um, so. I mean, I myself have, have covered a few aircraft crashes in this area. I mean, that's always fairly, you know, or more common when you're this close to any kind of airport or air park. Um, but yes, this is not what people expected. And of course, even further shock that it's a, a BSO fire rescue um, aircraft, Chris. Yeah, and to give perspective for folks at home, our Amanda Placencia is at the hospital, Broward Health North, where we know that two people were taken. She says there are at least half a dozen uh, law enforcement vehicles there, uh, law enforcement going in and out of the emergency room. Uh, I, you know, it, it, it speaks to, again, this being uh, uh, an officer-involved tragedy here uh, with one fatality. Uh, I want to read uh, an FAA statement uh, that we just got. Uh, they're confirming a Euro, uh, Eurocopter EC-135 helicopter crashed into a structure. They're saying 745. Our understanding is 845, but uh, they do confirm that three people were on board. They say the FAA, the National Security Board, will be investigating, and we should know more information uh, momentarily. And, you know, with a preliminary accident, an incident report already by tomorrow, which is what Willard Shepard was talking yeah. about, that they'll release a preliminary report uh, in the next coming days, they're saying by tomorrow, uh, with with some insight into what may have happened, but then they'll do an investigation for several weeks, for several months, that then will give us some more information 
uh, eventually about what happened. Yeah, and, and, you know, you, you have to go through the scene. You have to try to piece together whatever you can. And just taking a look, I know you and I were both trying to look into the building and, and find the helicopter. And, and you really can't see any of the remnants of the actual helicopter itself. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation all across the board. And again, you're, you're dealing with a Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter. So uh, they're dealing with, I think, uh, I'll take over. Your microphone yeah. has my been working on overtime is, since this morning, uh, right? Yeah, so swap <laughs> we're swapping out the battery. But yeah, I mean, Willard was giving us insight about the amount of investigation that has to happen. They're going to go through the training log. They're going to go through the maintenance log of this of this chopper that took off this morning. We don't know if this was during takeoff or landing when this chopper went down. Uh, we know that three people were on board. Law enforcement sources are telling uh, Marissa that one person uh, has passed away. They were looking for a third person. They have been found, uh, but their fate has not been told to us here. Two people were taken to the hospital, and that is where Amanda Placencia is. You'll see her later on this morning. But the question is, are these people who were on the ground, or were these people who were on this flight? When you're looking at this chopper, if there were three people on board, you're wondering just how anybody was able to make it out of that chopper when it went down, and it's just left in pieces as you're looking there through the roof. Uh, so it makes you think that perhaps these two people are were in that, that duplex, in that residential building there. Uh, but this is all information that investigators are, are going to find out, and we're going to find out, you know, within the next couple of hours as the story develops, as we're talking to people. Something interesting I found that Marissa was saying that mm -hmm. witnesses were reporting hearing two explosions, not just the one that was during the time of impact when this chopper lost control and hit this building. But also when firefighters were there, they were responding, trying to take out the flames. They had to back away because they heard another explosion. Uh yeah, and, and that was something, I, I, my microphone's working now, so uh, you imagine you have the initial impact, which is going to cause that first blast, but when you see the, the huge flames that erupted, the combination of the aviation fuel mixing with the surrounding environment there, causing that big explosion, it could have been the subsequent explosion, or coming into contact with something inside of that apartment building that caused it to explode, uh, and you could just see the devastating effects of that fire. Uh, firefighters then racing to the scene, Willard mentioned that there was a fire station not far from where this helicopter crashed, which is why they were able to respond so quickly. And, and again, we are uh, saying big hats off to those firefighters for getting that fire under control so quickly. When you see the video uh, of just how intense that fire was, the thick black smoke shooting up into the air, the flames 20, 30 feet high up into the sky, it's miraculous that they were able to put it out so quickly and keep that structure from burning down completely. You could see it is a multi-unit apartment complex. It it looks like two buildings maybe separated by a corridor right there in the middle. Um, and, and they pretty, it looks like that they have contained it to probably two apartment units right here. Uh, so quick action by the firefighters there working to get that fire extinguished. Now the tough task is for the uh, NTSB and the FAA to come in and conduct their investigation to try and figure out what went wrong here. We saw the video sent in by an NBC6 viewer showing that helicopter spinning out of control, black smoke pouring out of that helicopter. Willard says that tends to indicate some sort of engine failure, the, the oil burning off, causing that black smoke to pour out of the helicopter. Uh, what caused that engine to fail? Uh, obviously, that's something they're going to try to look into and figure out what caused this helicopter to come crashing down in Pompano Beach at about 845 this morning. So uh, about two hours now after that helicopter crashed. And what you're looking at now are live images from Chopper 6 above the aftermath of that deadly crash, at least according to Marissa Bag source, who have confirmed to her that at least one person has died as a result appears uh, at least from our reports that we're getting that there were four people involved, three on board the helicopter and one person who was in the building. Uh, again, we're working with BSO to confirm that information. We want to bring Willard back in. Uh, Willard Shepard, you've been listening in. You've been watching this develop. You heard Marissa with some new information there as to what she's learning. Uh, any more insight that, you, that you've been able to gather or any more info you've been able to gather since we last talked with you? Well, the normal configuration for this helicopter would be uh, one pilot. Uh, who also has some emergency uh, medical training, and two paramedics uh, that are on board that have all types of specific medical training to be able to go in and help uh, in any type of situation, whether that be a car accident, uh, uh, any other type of person uh, shot, anything along those types of lines. 
so that was uh, normally the, the configuration in terms of the personnel on board, which uh, matches uh, what we're uh, hearing so far this morning concerning uh, what unfortunately transpired there in Pompano Beach. Uh, I don't have word yet as to whether or not the helicopter was taking off or coming back in to land at that particular point. Uh, with the size of that type of fire that was out there, uh, we could uh, think that it, it was uh, in its uh, departure mode, but uh, that's something that the FAA and the NTSB will be able to determine very quickly. Uh, that announcement from the FAA, as I was talking about earlier, the very basics of this uh, we'll know pretty quickly here about what uh, specifically transpired. But the big picture here in this is when it comes to loss of aircraft control, Clearly, this pilot, a person very, very highly trained uh, to be able to be employed by BSO for this type of task on a daily basis out over Broward County. And uh, for this to happen and to go into this building and this pilot not be able to place it back at the air park, which is a very short distance away. I think Marissa said just about a half a mile and also not in a parking lot, baseball field, anything, even on the street out in front of this apartment complex. And from what we saw from that video, this looks like a completely loss of control situation going down into the building. It is just absolutely unfortunate. The address that we have where it did end up going is 100 Northeast 10th Street, uh, several apartment units, as you see there. Uh, nearby schools, Pompano Beach Elementary School, uh, just under a mile away, Pompano Beach Middle School, uh, very, very close nearby. And you mentioned, Chris, Blanche Ely High School. So uh, if it happened at 845 this morning, uh, it, we're not sure about what the time schedule, the uh, school schedule was, but it could have been drop off or it could have been, uh, you know, the car line or anything yeah. of that sort. But you just have to wonder how many, how many people are, were any of these families sleeping at the time? Uh, were they heading out to work? I mean, you're just starting your work week. You're just starting your, your school week. And this is the last thing that you would expect to happen. Uh, Willard, when you're hearing that uh, uh, Marissa was speaking to witnesses and they were talking about hearing two different explosions, what do you think the second explosion speaks to uh, when firefighters are already on the scene trying to take out those flames and they had to back away because of the force and the, and the, the blast, a second blast? Well, that initial explosion would have been the, the initial impact. And then uh, any other fuel that may have uh, pooled in an area, anything along those lines would be on that secondary explosion where it additionally didn't go up. Although where it went into that apartment building, we don't know if there was something in the apartment building that uh, was flammable, uh, some type of uh, device that was in a kitchen or something along those lines that ignited a uh, person that could have had a propane gas tank uh, in the building because uh, they do their own barbecuing and cooking out in a patio area there at the building. Uh, that secondary explosion uh, would have been something that when in a, in a natural fire that could have taken place. And that initial explosion certainly engulfed several of the units there. And, and we're very fortunate you're addressing the timing of this mm -hmm. and when it took place that uh, people had started their day, uh, whether that be with school, with work, with being out, and not uh, earlier in the course of the morning or during the middle of the night, when certainly more people would have been in that building. Willard, we're... Uh... We're looking right into the apartment right now, and you can see uh, some of the emergency responders there making efforts to work their way through. A and I'm trying to see a helicopter. We know the helicopter crashed right into this building, but I think that speaks to just the, the, the intensity of the flames and how hot that fire was burning, uh, fueled by that aviation fuel as well. Uh, and and there, uh, the question I had is with the NTSB, when the FAA, they come in to investigate, obviously they're going to have their hands full trying to piece this together. Is there a black box on board a helicopter that you would typically find on an airplane? Do all aircraft have these black boxes on board? Uh, some of them do, depending on the uh, technology and the advancement and when this helicopter was built. And I don't have the tail number on the helicopter yet, so I can't tell you exactly about uh, the manufacturer data when it came off the line to research to see if uh, it actually had that type of technology. Uh, that type, type of technology is available uh, generally across the aviation community now. It would just depend on when it, it was uh, built and the manufacturer placing it in there. 
uh, that would certainly provide a huge amount of technical data to the FAA and also the NTSB and provide all of the information about the engine operation, uh, the collective on the helicopter, all of the other types of data that would uh, be able to give them some real specifics about from a technical perspective what was going on with the helicopter at the time this morning when uh, the pilot lost control of it uh, and that it w- descended rapidly into uh, this building. Uh, there would be uh, some information with the tail number as well uh, as to the flight data, as exactly when it took off, exactly the altitude it reached, the airspeed that it reached, and the descent rate that it went down into the building. So those are the kinds of technical things that the FAA and the NTSB want to get their hands on. And having that kind of technical data will really be able to aid and assist them. We just need to be able to get the uh, tail number on this. Uh, Many times, unfortunately, when we have aircraft mishaps uh, and tragedies, uh, when it comes to a fixed-wing airplane, the uh, wreckage is spread out over a certain area. And there's a, you're able to see and gather some uh, information from what you can witness about whether a wing is there, an engine is there, a propeller is there, those types of things, and also the tail number of the airplane. But that's certainly not the case here with this aircraft going down into the building at a relatively steep angle from looking at the video I'm able to see. And that's something about this, that that it went into a relatively steep angle. We don't see a lot about the helicopter kind of cutting across in through the building, like going into one side and coming out the other. It just looks like the damage is that down through the roof at about a 60 degree angle or so from the video I've been able to see. Yeah, it's it's tough to watch that video. We were we were watching it <clears throat> and playing it on loop there <clears throat> as it was going down. When you're seeing it spin out of control, and you're and you say it's an auto rotation when it's there's no engine. It's it's being essentially driven and forced by by the winds. They're trained for that. They're supposed to seek a, a safe place to land. But at this point, you know this is a highly residential area, Pompano Beach, it, very packed with homes and schools and. <clears throat> And businesses. So, where do you find when you're stuck in an emergency like that? Where do you find a place to land and yet still blocks away from the air park? <clears throat> well, that combined with the fact that you don't have control of the the helicopter exactly. at that point, which makes it all yeah. the more challenging. Yeah. And, and the point to what you all are talking about goes back to something that we've addressed at North Perry Airport multiple times: is that you basically have an airport in a highly densely populated civilian area. Most of these airfields were set up during World War II, and what has happened is the community has grown up around it. Uh And we haven't been at Pompano Air Park as frequently as incidents over at North Perry, uh, but the same type of scenario exists, and what both of you are just addressing now, because it's in very close proximity to the airport these residential neighborhoods that are right along in there where a situation like this impacts not just the aviation business and aviation community, but also impacts the residents who are nearby. And that's unfortunately what we see happening today because there are hundreds of takeoff and landings out of Pompano Airport, uh, you know, on a daily basis. And when you have an airport right against the proximity uh, and up against the fence line uh, of a neighborhood, uh, that is the type of thing that exposes the residents to uh, a potential danger and why those in the aviation community, those of us have to be really diligent about the flight operations uh, so that we do not have mishaps or incidents that impact the community. And, of course, the Broward Sheriff's Office does everything that they can to make sure that this does not happen. And again, Willard, our hearts go out to the BSO. Uh, Broward Sheriff's Office is on the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, investigating this, this crash. And we're now hearing reports that, uh, you know, with this being a BSO rescue helicopter, these are their, their brothers and sisters. They're all a tight knit group. Uh, anytime you're investigating any sort of aircraft crash, it's going to be tough. But when you're investigating a crash involving your brothers or sisters, 
It's got to take it up another level, Willer. And I know you're close with a lot of people in law enforcement. Um, when you're investigating a crash involving some of your own, it has to be extra tough. Oh, very much so. I mean, they go all out for anyone. It doesn't matter who it is of the citizens that serve. But they obviously uh, know who these individuals are. They train with these individuals. Uh, they work with them on a daily basis. And so it clearly is uh, uh, closer to them when this type of thing uh, happens. I, I think uh, Amanda Placenti is over at the hospital where so many BSO employees have gone to provide support to uh, not just these employees, but also the family members and loved ones of these employees. And, and something I want uh, you to think about and viewers to think about today is the level of training of this pilot and this crew. Uh, they are trained, and we have seen them go to I-95 on accidents and land these helicopters in very, very small areas to be able to go and put in a person that needs emergency medical assistance and extract them, get them on the helicopter, and get them to the trauma center as rapidly as possible. So just really think about that this morning, that the uncontrollability of this aircraft for an individual who has that level of training. Uh, we're not talking about landing an airplane on a 10,000 foot runway uh, and being able to uh, manage that kind of situation. The training level for this pilot is to be able to put the airplane or aircraft helicopter down in a on a street so that they're able to quickly take an individual, put them in a the helicopter and get them to uh, emergency medical care. And for that individual not to be able to control the helicopter so it went into this building, that just gives you from a, a common sense perspective some idea of how catastrophic whatever happened to the helicopter that the MTSC will get to the bottom of happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we're seeing this video here from, from the NBC6 chopper, we did see several tarps that were inside that, you know, really speaks for itself. But, you know, something that I can't stop thinking about is our own NBC6 chopper. The pilot who's on board getting video of this and hovering over the scene, it has to be very sobering for them. I mean, these pilots know each other. It's a very tight-knit community. And, you know, who knows if he knows the pilot who was involved in this, but it has to be very eerie and sobering when you're, in a chopper uh, covering this for viewers at home in our community and also seeing just the amount of, of damage and how it just disintegrated this chopper. And uh, so, I, you know, as we're talking about law enforcement and, and the brothers and sisters who are thinking about themselves, but also the pilots and, and the aviation teams uh, who are so close to it. And um, it just it's just absolutely unfortunate. Yeah, they're on the radios all the time with each other because they're at Pompano, the uh, ATIS frequency where you get all the other information about what the weather is, if there's anything unusual at the airport during the course of the day, is something that everyone listens to. And then over to the ground frequencies, uh, they're on the same radio frequencies all the time with each other, see each other walking to and from uh, their aircraft uh, th throughout the course of the day. Also, uh, there are several fuel companies there at Pompano. So they see each other and, and develop relationships across the board. And frankly, um, in uh, the news business and in the law enforcement business, whether it's the other PSO helicopter dealing with the types of things we talked about earlier, whether that be a car chase or a law enforcement function, and this helicopter dealing with uh, medical situations uh, many times, that they're all in the same place. Because think about all of the times you have been on the air uh, with uh, the NBC6 helicopter, and it's involving a circumstance or situation where uh, the BSO law enforcement or this helicopter is involved. So this is kind of a, a community that they have within the aviation uh, community, a uh, smaller segment of one where they're in the same airspace frequently uh, just by the nature of their work, uh, and that is a bond that... Uh, those of us in the aviation community have, and especially these helicopter pilots that frequently uh, speak uh, to each other, even maybe may over the radio, to deconflict an airspace, uh, one of them making sure they're at a certain altitude and another one making sure they're at another altitude. 
and those relationships uh, can be uh, built up uh, over a considerable time period. All right, Willard, thank you for your insight there as we uh, are just a little bit past 11 o'clock. If you're just joining us now, we just want to recap, you, recap to you what we know at this point. And what you're looking at is video from News Chopper 6 above the scene of a helicopter crash that happened at about 845 this morning in Pompano Beach. The Broward Sheriff's Office confirming to us that this is indeed a fire rescue helicopter. Uh, sources telling our NBC6 reporter Marissa Bag that they believe there were three people on board the helicopter and one person in the building on the ground who are involved in this crash. Again, preliminary reports, and we're still waiting for this confirmation from Broward Sheriff's Office, but according to sources, three people involved, three on board the helicopter, one person apparently in this apartment building. It's a multi-unit apartment building there in Pompano Beach, just blocks away from the Pompano Beach Air Park. Yeah, uh, several schools, uh, North Dixie Highway, and uh, this is just north, you said, north of Atlantic Boulevard. Yes, so yes. this is Northeast 6th to 10th Street are closed. Uh, uh, so if you're familiar with this area, Pompano Beach expected to be shut down for quite some time. If we can, our Joanna Torres, traffic anchor Joanna Torres, has been watching uh, the roads and the closures and can kind of help navigate us around this. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Shelly and Chris. Well, as you just mentioned, due to this crash, unfortunately, there are some road closures due to it. This, again, all happening on Dixie Highway between Atlantic Boulevard and Northwest 15th Street. The area that's completely shut down is between Northeast 5th Street and Northeast 10th Street. So your alternate route there, if you have to head around any Anywhere in that direction is going to be Federal Highway 95 or Andrews Avenue. So just give yourself some extra time because pretty sure that these roads are going to be closed for several hours as investigators are out there. Uh -huh. Joanna, you said, I just want to repeat that again mm -hmm. for folks. Okay, so the alternate route is Federal Highway. Federal Highway 95 or Andrews Avenue in order to avoid the area that's completely blocked off, which okay. is between Northeast 5th Street and Northeast 10th Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously a situation that's not going to resolve anytime soon. So <clears throat> if you do need to travel in that area, you're going to want to avoid it or take some of those alternate routes that Joanna just mentioned. We appreciate you being with us as we've been watching this since early this morning. Uh, 845 this morning, we got reports of an aircraft going down. And then we found out that there were three people on board and it was a fire rescue, a Broward Sheriff's fire rescue chopper that was involved. Uh, we have not gotten confirmation uh, that who were the people on board. You know, with, these are the, the uh, fire rescue teams that go out to call. So we don't know if they were transporting a patient or if they were, you know, going on a, a from out for maintenance. Uh, but again, three people on board. We did see several tarps. We know that at least one person has died. Uh, that being uh, from law enforcement uh, sources, Marissa Bagg said she Witnesses confirmed and heard two explosions, uh, one at the time of impact, one soon after when firefighters were already there trying to put out the flames. Uh, they had to, you know, scoop back and keep distance because uh, of the explosion that perhaps was caused uh, with, you know, propane or something that was ignited once inside of the home. We don't know if two people who were in the hospital, Broward Health North, are people from the ground from this apartment building or if they were on board. Too uh, soon to tell. Nothing confirmed at this point. You imagine this all started at about 845 this morning when the initial reports of the helicopter crashing uh, came out. So it's a very busy time of the morning. A lot of people out. Uh, we're getting in some new cell phone video just now from another NBC6 viewer. We've been sharing some of the images. And this looks very similar to what we saw earlier from that other video. And you could see the helicopter spinning out of control, smoke pouring out of there, which appears, at least according to Willard Shepard, who is very experienced, uh, very experienced with with aviation, it appears to be some sort of engine failure, engine malfunction, and you see the black smoke coming out and then the fire that, that followed just seconds after that helicopter when crashing into that apartment building. You see people on the roof here. Uh, again, we're seeing this video for the first time uh, right along with you, but you can see the helicopter again out of control right now and, and falling straight downward. Um, Willard talked a little bit about what a pilot is, what's going through their mind at this point, trying to find a safe place to land when, when an unexpected event happens, like an engine failure or problems with a helicopter like this. But when you see it spinning like that, it, it appears that there's really nothing that this pilot can do at this point. There's no way to regain control of that helicopter when it's in that type of spin uh, with smoke coming out. Obviously, it was a very, very dire situation right there and that helicopter just head straight down into the ground where it crashed right through the roof of that multi-complex apartment building there leading to this huge fire. And you Oof. can see they're, they're coming out of the roof there. 
yeah. um, from this new video that we've gotten. So many videos from viewers sending in pictures because, again, such a busy time when you think on a Monday morning. So many people are heading out to work or school, drop-offs. Uh, it's just so such a busy time in the morning. And we're hoping that no one was inside. Everybody was already out by the time uh, this happened into that apartment building that was on Northeast 10th. Uh, but just the amount of smoke and just the amount of fire and the flames and and something that Willard was talking about was, you know, as a house fire it grows after yeah. it's been ignited, whereas this, this is an explosion. Everything happened at once. You have the jet fuel. You have perhaps what's something ignited inside when it's hitting a home or several homes. Uh, just uh, the perfect storm for this situation and uh, just an awful news to start on this Monday morning. Uh, we're also, you know, keeping an eye out here. Our team, our meteorology team, is uh, keeping an eye on Adalia that is supposed to be getting an update any minute now because we know that it could strengthen to a hurricane at some point today. Uh, whether this 11 a.m. advisory is going to do that or it's going to be out later on this afternoon, we're standing by. So we'll keep you posted. A very yeah. busy morning here on NBC. Just sticking with Adalia for two minutes, and we'll obviously get back to this story. Uh, we could start feeling the effects of Adalia, not obviously with a direct hit. This is going to be a Gulf Coast impact, but we're going to start feeling some of the winds feeling some of the outer uh, rain bands later tonight into tomorrow morning. So again, just be prepared for that. And we're going to have that advisory at 11 o'clock. Landfall expected probably sometime Wednesday morning, anywhere from, from Pinellas County all the way up to the Big Bend in Florida. So that's another huge story that we're watching very closely. As we bring you the latest here in Pompano Beach, and these are images from Chopper 6, high above a helicopter crash that involved a, the Broward Sheriff's Office fire rescue helicopter. 